Hello, I'm Richard Esplin from the Avaya Federal team. Uh, Greg Bastian and I have put together a demonstration network to show you what Avaya's Fabric Connect is capable of. Uh, we'll show you how the network is architected, and then uh, when we go to the demonstration room, we'll show you how it fails over, uh, the ability to maintain sessions, uh, simply architect the network, provide a very resilient environment for all of your mission critical applications. This is a picture of how the lab is put together. We have the uh, top of rack switches over here with a couple of servers hanging off the top of rack servers. We have a video server providing a multicast video stream out to endpoints on the other side of the network. We have a PBX that is uh, connected to a phone both at the server farm and to phones out at the uh, end user switches at the uh, far end of the network. And uh, of course we can run pings back and forth as well just to show the connectivity and any disruption that might be occurring in the network as we show you some of the failure scenarios in the architecture. Here this set of switches is our data center aggregation switches. They are running our switch clustering technology via split multi-link trunking. And they are also running the Via Fabric Connect to the core of the network. So they're an edge bridge. The two core switches are only running the Fabric Connect capabilities. They are Fabric Connect core switches. We have no end user buildings or end user uh, requirements on these switches. So all they have is a, a core viewpoint of the network. At the other hand, we have our campus distribution switches and that's our Fabric Connect Edge. They're also part of the Avaya Fabric Connect as they talk back to the core, but they're also a clustered pair of switches using our SMLT technology because we want our user access switches to be, uh, to have no single points of failure in the, anywhere in the network. Each user access switch is a stacked pair of switches, uh, different models that we have, and they have uplinks to both different edge bridges at the distribution layer so that there's no single point of failure anywhere in the network. And that will allow us to have our voice continuity, video continuity, all of our applications will continue to operate at all times uh, if for any single failure we have anywhere in the network. Or in some cases, multiple failures will still allow us to survive and continue all of our traffic through the network. So. Our voice network, we're using a layer two virtual service network. So we've created a broadcast domain through the Fabric Connect core by just creating what's called an ICID, an individual service identifier. In this case, it's 53 is what we use. And we assign that to VLAN 53 out on the top of rack server farm side. And we assign it to VLAN 53 out at the user access switch side. Now, there's nothing magical about ICID 53 and VLAN 53. If I was merging organizations and I had to have a VLAN 53 on one side, VLAN 100 on the other side, or if I wanted to use ICID 250, that would be perfectly acceptable because the VLAN is really only locally significant when using a Fabric Connect technology. The ICID is what makes the collision, I mean, the broadcast domain come together. Because these are both ICID 53, the Fabric Connect knows that this VLAN and that VLAN are actually connected together in the single broadcast domain, allowing all of your standard Ethernet applications to run across that layer two VLAN. Our other part of the demonstration, on the next slide, is we're using layer three VSNs or IP shortcut routing and we're also doing multicast over our Fabric Connect. So what we're using is, we're using ISIS to do route redistribution. ISIS, much like OSPF, actually predates OSPF, is a link state database type technology. And it will learn across the network what VLANs are out there. It can redistribute those routes across the network. I do not have to add BGP, OSPF, RIP or any other routing protocol, I can choose to and I can redistribute routes between those and ISIS back and forth if I choose to. But in my environment, 
I'm just using ISIS to load all my direct connect routes. Here I have VLAN 99. Over here I have VLAN 111 in one of my user access switch clusters and VLAN 123 in the other user access switch cluster. And because I'm redistributing those routes, I'm able to get traffic across between any of these three VLANs. And we'll demonstrate that with the pings we have running through the, through the network. At the same time, uh, with our extensions to SPB, we, our Fabric Connect allows us to have the multicast server sitting on the top of rack switches, serving up a multicast video stream to both of these different VLANs at the other end of the network. The efficiency of multicast is well known, but the problems of having to run PIM or DVMRP or multicast routing protocols adds a lot of overhead and can create very slow recovery in a failure scenario. You also run into the issue that if you have applications that are sensitive to out-of-order packets, you don't always get your unicast and multicast packets at the receiver the same order they were sent from the sender. So you have to be careful about how you architect these. Well, it turns out with shortest path bridging, multicast over our Fabric Connect technology, we're able to continuously maintain packets in the same order they're sent, received at the receiver, and we get very fast failover in any of our switches along the path. In fact, sub-second, and you will see that on the multicast video stream, there might be a little bit of pixelization, Sometimes it's less than you can even catch with your eyes. Sometimes you'll see it for, for a momentary flicker on the screen. But it's very resilient, and all of the packets will be received in order at the far end, same order they were sent from the sender. And that's a, a, it's very easy to do. We don't need any multi no in the network. Is there any spanning tree protocol either? We eliminate spanning tree protocol because shortest path bridging will not allow loops. It prevents loops from happening, so you don't need it. So there's no spanning tree, multiple spanning tree, rapid spanning tree. None of those are required anywhere through the whole core of this network. That's one of the reasons that it allows us to fail over sub-second and maintain voice, video, and other mission-critical data streams through the network, even though we have a significant failure right in the core. Another nice feature of the Vise Fabric Connect technology is once the core is set up, if you're not using it as an edge bridge connecting user buildings or user access devices, you never have to touch them again. The core of the network, once configured, will dynamically learn from the edge bridges what VLANs are out there, what ICIDs exist in the network, and it will just pass the traffic to those endpoints if they're on the shortest path. You don't have to do any further configuration in the core of the network, saving the possibility of human error taking down a large part of your network as you're trying to upgrade for new services you want to add to your network. So this is a demonstration that we have for you. Greg will be providing that demonstration when we get over to the lab. <laughs> Hi, I'm Greg Bastian from Avaya, and today we're in our lab and we're going to demonstrate for you Avaya's Fabric Connect technology and the resiliency that it provides. As Richard explained earlier in our demonstration, uh, what we have here is our data center aggregation. It consists of two 8,000 series switches. The data center aggregation is connected to the top of rack servers, which we, of course, have installed in the bottom of the rack, and these provide the compute access for the data center. To the right here, we have the Fabric Connect core. This also consists of two 8,000 series switches. And then further to the right, we have our campus distribution, which again is two 8,000 series switches. The campus distribution then goes out to user access switches in two buildings. Uh, the two buildings are represented at the bottom of this rack. Building number one is the two 4,500 series switches, which are interconnected using Avaya stacking technology, and they uplink back to the distribution using copper, RJ45. Building number two consists of two 5,500 series switches, which are again connected using a via stacking technology, and they uplink to the core using fiber. The reason we uplink using the different uh, technologies is just to show the different uh, available methods of connectivity. Uh, also, I should mention that the stacking technology works with up to eight switches. 
to the far left here in our data center, we have our AS5300 telephone system and a telephone. And then we also have a laptop that is streaming a movie via multicast. To our far right, we have two laptops and two telephones. Uh, one is connected to building one access switch, and the other is connected to the building two user access switch. Um, as you can see on this screen, there are a total of seven ping windows open. Uh, these are essentially, if you look at them, these will be lined up equivalent with the racks. So the yellow here is the uh, data center aggregation core switch one and core switch two. And then in the center, the yellow with black is actually the uh, gateway address for VLAN 99, which is a virtual address shared between those two switches. The center in green here is the Fabric Connect core one and two. And to the right in the blue is the distribution uh, one and two. All of the addresses with the exception of this yellow window are the clip address or the loopback address for the physical device. And the reason we configured it this way is so when I physically power the device off, you can see that it goes down. You can see on the two laptops, they're both watching Iron Man, a great movie. And then we have ping windows open on both. The top ping window in yellow is actually the physical address of the top of rack switch in the data center. And in blue down here is the default gateway for VLAN 123, which is building one. And on this one, again, it is the IP address for the top of rack switch in the data center. And the blue is the default gateway for VLAN 111, which is building two. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start a telephone call from the data, cell, data center telephone over to one of the user access buildings. Absolutely no spanning period whatsoever. 
we can bring these devices into the network and brace for it. Once again, once these devices come up, you may see a slight pixelization. The video will not drop, and the voice will not drop. Uh, additionally, as well as not having spanning tree, there are no dynamic routing protocols other than ISIS running, so there's no reconvergence required. And there are no multicast routing protocols running whatsoever, so again, no reconvergence. Just to make it a challenge, what I'm going to do is I'm going to power up both core devices at the same time. It'll take approximately three minutes for these to come back online. And I'll probably fast forward some of the time. The charge are beginning to come online. It is looking good. And we're getting things here. This one should be coming up. Here. So as you can see, the video continues to play. The telephone call never dropped. We reinserted the devices back into the network with, with no interruption whatsoever. This concludes our presentation. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact Richard Eskin at Vada. Have a nice day.